My name is Frederik, I'm an economist here and a lot of you have seen me before. Unfortunately, I had to take over this presentation from Nina Sunest, our tariff economist uh, who has lost her voice gradually over the last few days and today nobody could barely hear her. Um, the presentation is the, sta is the status on foremost uh, emergency tariffs that are coming into force by October 2015 and also a view on the expected level of tariffs for the next gas year, that is the gas year starting October 2016. And finally, uh, as a summary from this morning's user group, we'll go through the tariff methodology project. Where is the network codes for tariffs at the moment? How do we in Aginet anticipate to implement them in the Danish tariff network group? The emergency tariffs is defined as a commodity charge. That means that it's levied on the offtake in the, in the Danish zone, not on the interconnection points to the neighboring adjacent systems. It is, a, for the next year, has a cost base of 58 million Danish kroners. That is, that in a guinea on behalf of the market purchases emergency supply products of a value of 58 million Danish kroners. All these things are bought according to a market mechanism, meaning that we will ask whoever can provide these services and choose the better offer that we receive. So the 58 million is a basket of the services. At the same time, we have a expected over-recovery at the start of the period of 66 million Danish kroners. That means that we have over-recovered or taken too much in revenues in the previous years. So the 66 million Danish kroners will have to be given back to the market uh, in the coming tariff periods. Since the cost base is only 58 million Danish kroners, then it is necessary mathematically for us in order to avoid having negative emergency supply tariffs that we split the 66 million into 22 million over three years. So for the next three years, you can expect that the cost base or the tariffs will be lower corresponding to the 22 million Danish kroners. Unfortunately, previously we had even more an over-recovery. That means that we have a net higher cost base for the emergency supply, resulting in a, at least mathematically quite significant increase in the tariffs. So here you have the tariffs that are enforced today on the protected customers and on the non-protected customers. Naturally, the protected customers' tariffs will be logically slightly higher than for the non-protected customers. When you look at the increase, which is somewhere as in the vicinity of 600%, then this is a mathematical function of that we, in the previous year, has deducted that much from our cost base from over-recovery from, uh, from, from previous periods. So we are not purchasing more or more expensive emergency supply products. We just have less of an over-recovery that we can deduct from this cost base. As you can also see here, we are in the current period 2014-15 at an absolute low in our, in our uh, tariffs. So the increase, the 500%, 600% increase is on the basis of an extraordinarily low level this year. Seen over a longer period, the emergency tariffs are still lower than historic levels, quite significantly lower than historical levels. Also another effect you'll see is that gradually over time, when we make a forecast of this, the difference between the protected and the non-protected customers are likely to increase. Are there any questions to the development in the emergency tariffs, keep in mind they come into force from October 2015. Doesn't look like there are many, many questions. Then we give and we emphasize the indicative transmission tariffs, that is next year's 2016 to 2017 transportation tariffs, uh, an indicative bit on how they will develop compared to this year. There are at least three different effects that, that I'll try to, to see if I can separate and, 
and make clear to you. First is a positive development. We expect that for 2016-17 we will sell more and transport more gas through the system compared to the year 2015-16. There is both an increase in the expected sales of capacity, which is somewhere in the vicinity of 6-7% increase from 21 million to 23 million. The unit is kilowatt hours per hour per year. There is a similar, perhaps slightly bigger 7% increase in the expectations for commodity transported through the system, the gas transported, measured in mil millions of kilowatt hours. It'll increase from 68,000 to 73,700. So we expect a moderate increase in transportation next year. Our cost base is shown here. At the top we have the operational expenditures, which is used to calculate the volume of the commodity tariff. And then we have the capex which is used to set the capacity tariffs and also to estimate the differentiation on those points that uh, are covering dedicated new infrastructure. That is Elon entry and the zone and power, which has a, a specific element added to their tariffs. The cost base is not increasing compared to previous years, at least the effect is not significant. However, there is much less over recovery from previous periods, so the net impact on the tariffs will be increased. Combined, this will result in a, a differentiation, or let's say this will result in an average increase of the capacity tariff around 9%. I mentioned that there are three, three factors influencing this. One is that we expect to sell more. The other one is that our cost base will be uh, higher because there's less over recovery. The third effect is a change, an expected or proposed change where we will reduce the price of short term tariffs relative to the long term tariffs. These three factors are when we reduce the short term products pricing, i.e., we will remove the seasonal profiles and have a flat price profile during the year, and we will uh, reduce the multiplier that is the ratio between the short-term products and the long-term annual product, the impact of that in itself is 12%. So when you add all these factors together, you get an average increase in the capacity price of 9%. For the volume, there's not really any impact. Um, and then you get different results when you look at the capacity prices in the individual points. For instance, if we take the Elon entry price, it will increase by 15%, whereas Nupro Trauer uh, will only increase by, by 5%. The reason for this is an, uh, some historically accumulated variances or differences that has been investigated and found out by the Danish Energy Regulatory Authority. They have asked us to uh, during the next two years ensure that those points that have been paying too little will, uh, will be compensated. Whereas Elon Entry, which was the point that enjoyed a lower tariff than, uh, than what they should have paid, are owing this amount to the other points. So bigger impact, bigger increase on Elon Entry, smaller increase on the other points because money has been moved around between the various points. Also, there is an increase in the differentiation between the, uh, the various products, capacity products in the entry exit points in the system. So you'll see the difference is now at the lowest 5% and up to 38% variation between highest and lowest capacity tariffs. Are there at this moment any questions to the it is the latter. Uh, I think it's a rounding off error, uh, is my guess. Because I agree when you look at the at the commodity tariff here, there is a a numerical difference, so there must be something above zero percent change. I agree. Uh, 
Uh, one more time. Fifteen percent increase. It, it sounds reasonable. Uh, I think it's an error in the in the table. <laughs> Apart from uh, from catching us in mathematical errors, are there <laughs> any additional comments to the to the table? Sorry. Uh, keep in mind these are indicative. There will at the latest during the spring be be uh, a recalculation of this, where we will publish the, the actual tariffs as they will come into force from October 2016. A brief catch up on what we told on the status on the tariff network code this morning in the user group. There is a postponement of the entire process of around six months. That is that the the initial phase in which NCG and ASA have been drafting a version of the tariff network code has been prolonged. There has been a series of meetings between the European Commission, NCG, the TSOs, and, and ASA, the regulator. Uh, during this process, we believe that the tariff network code has less deviations from our framework for, for good practice, i.e. that there are less differences between the viewpoints of the TSOs and of the regulator. However, we still expect that there will be a thorough comitology process in which there will be changes to the tariff network code. So we know now that we will, by the latest at the end of this year, hand over a, a coherent draft tariff network code. And then for the first months of next year, the European Commission, the, ministry, the Council of Ministers and the European Parliament will have the comitology process where they own the document and decide the final form of it. By May next year we should know the final version of the tariff network code. This will be the kick-off signal for an internal in a GINET process of uh, implementing these codes in the Danish methodology. It will be an open process, meaning that we will invite you uh, shippers and other stakeholders in the system to influence the choice of methodology uh, within all these freedom degrees that we have in the network code. There will be a user task force submitted and there will be a series of meetings and in addition we will also publish a bi-monthly newsletter sent to all of you where we will say now <coughs> we anticipate the, these and these changes to the Danish methodology. Are there any comments to the tariff network code process and for the internal implementation process in Imaginet? Otherwise, feel free at any time to submit these questions to any of us or to our tariff economist Nina, who is unfortunately not present here today. We, uh, we will listen carefully to whatever points of view you have and try to incorporate them in the changes. Thank you very much. <laughs>